Yes, autumn is right around the corner, and even though I'm a summer person, I welcome the cooler temperatures. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today. I am so excited about today's tutorial because I'm going to be using the gorgeous beads from the Jesse James Beads Magical Mystery Bead Box for the month of August. Now if you subscribe to that box, you will have seen a gorgeous collection of leaf charms and pendants, and I got so inspired when I saw those, I couldn't resist making a necklace. Let me give you a glimpse of what we're going to be making today. Now if you don't have any of the beads or pendants or charms left, you can still make this necklace. I just want to inspire you guys, okay? That's what this tutorial is about. So I want you to try and find similar items from your stash or go out and buy them. I will leave a list of all the materials down in the description. So anyway guys, I don't want to make this video too long, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, let's go ahead and go over the materials. Here's the box. You're going to need the mold cider packet. You're also going to need the falling leaves packet and the red cap mushroom amanita muscaria packet and the moss and fern packet. So now let's go ahead and select the beads from each of the packets. Now if you don't subscribe to the Jesse James Beads Magical Mystery Bead Box, I will leave a list of all the materials down in the description, okay? Some of them may be difficult for you to find because they're exclusive to Jesse James beads, but at least you'll have some idea of the sizes of the beads and the charms and the pendants. Let's go ahead and select the beads from this mold cider packet. We're definitely going to use one of these. I love this one. Look how gorgeous this bead is. So pretty. And we're going to use these Hishi beads. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them all out. I'm kind of designing on the fly, so I don't know exactly how many we're going to need, but um, we'll figure it out as we go along. And let's go ahead and pull out these ceramic beads as well. This is such a pretty color. It's kind of a greenish olive color, I would say, greenish yellowish. So that's it from this packet. Let me go ahead and put these away. And here's the moss and fern packet. Now I've already played around a little bit so I kind of know what I'm doing but like I said we're going to be designing on the fly a little bit so I'm not sure how many of these we'll need. Let's pull out four to begin with and I'm very tempted to use this squirrel because it's so cute. I really am but I may reserve this for a bracelet later on. This acorn though is so cute. I'm tempted to use this one as well but anyway let's go ahead and start with these four ceramic beads and then we'll decide later on. And here's the red cap mushroom packet. From this packet we're definitely going to use some of these rondelles in this reddish color and these beautiful red glazed ceramic beads. I love these. We'll pull out four of these and I think we'll use some of these um, melon beads or um, corrugated beads. And definitely these little petite leaf beads. They're so adorable. Here is the beautiful collection of leaves. I love these leaves. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty. And these leaves have actually inspired me quite a bit, so I kind of know what I'm going to be doing. These are going to be the focus of the piece that we're going to be making today. And I love this one. I absolutely love this one. So we're going to use this one. We're going to use these maple leaves. Look how pretty these are. It's hard to tell, but you can actually see a little bit through these. They're so beautiful. I love these. So we're going to need two of these. We're also going to be using these little bronze colored leaves. They're very lightweight, but I absolutely love them. And I'm not sure how many, but we'll pull out all four of them. Okay. And these two gold ones. I really love these. So let me put these four away. You're going to need a piece of leather, okay, and it's round leather cord as you can see. And this one is 1.5 millimeters, okay. Anything thicker than 1.5 may not fit through some of these beads. So this is what I recommend. And this is kind of like a bronzy metallic color as you can see. 
So you're going to need about 20 inches, I would say, because we're going to do some barrel knots and you want to give yourself plenty of uh, leather cord to do them. I don't like struggling with short pieces when I'm trying to make a barrel knot. I'm going to be using some chain and this is a kind of a fancy chain. I believe the name of this link is called mother and son chain. I don't know exactly. It's basically a twisted oval, as you can see and there are two different size links. There's a larger link and a smaller link. Let me give you the exact size of the links. The large link is about eight by five millimeters and the small link is four by three and a half millimeters. But you don't have to have the exact same chain guys, okay? You can use any chain from your stash. You can have a chain that has large links or one that has smaller links. It's totally up to you. And it doesn't even have to be bronze. It can be copper to match the leaf right here okay it's up to you you're also going to need a smaller link chain and this one is very tiny this one's about three by two maybe they're very very small links it's just a basic oval chain okay you're going to need a small piece for some of the dangles that we're going to be making and I may use a longer piece to make a minimalist type necklace to coordinate with a statement necklace that we're going to be making I don't know yet I'll have to see how much time I have if I can fit it in, I will. I may just go ahead and make it ahead of time and show you at the end of the video. We're gonna be using some artistic wire 20 gauge and this is an antique brass color. You're gonna need some ball head pins and you can use gold, copper, bronze, whatever you have. I happen to have gold and these are very thin. They're about 26 gauge. We're gonna use these to make some little charms using the tiny beads. So they need to be very thin. You're going to need a lobster claw clasp or two, depending on whether we have time to do uh, the second necklace. You're going to need some small jump rings. These are about five millimeters in size and they're about 18 gauge. So they're pretty strong. You're also going to need some six millimeter jump rings and I believe these are 19 gauge. And all of my jump rings are going to be bronze colored, but you can use copper or gold if you don't have bronze. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and put a clip on the end of my leather cord so that my beads don't slide off. I don't think they will, but just in case. And we're gonna start by threading on one of these melon beads, okay? And then we're gonna thread one of these light colored ceramic beads, okay? The next thing we're gonna thread on is one of these charms, leaf charms. So this is what we have so far. And now we're going to thread one of these mustardy colored leaves or olive colored leaves. I think they're mustard. It looks more like a mustard color. So now we need to attach a jump ring to one of these. Okay, because as you can see, it only has a little hole at the very top. Here's my jump ring and it's the six millimeter size. We're going to go ahead and open it. Thread it through the hole of the charm, like this, and close it up. You want to make sure that it's closed very, very well, okay, because this charm is very thin and it'll slip through a gap if you leave a gap, okay, so you want to check your jump ring. And these are very good quality jump rings, guys, okay. The cuts are very clean and straight and you can barely see them. So if you're going to use jump rings, you want to make sure you use good quality jump rings that close very well. Okay. I can't stress that enough. So this is what you should have. And now we're going to thread it through just like this. Bring it down. Next, we're going to thread one of these Hishi beads, wooden beads and bring it down. And now we're going to thread a red one a red ceramic bead and bring it down. So this is what you should have so far and I'm not concerned that I'm seeing the leather. Okay. I kind of like that because I want the leather to show a little bit. Otherwise, what's the point of using leather, right? Next, we're going to thread on another one of these wooden beads. And now one of these maple leaves. I love this. It's so cute and another Hishi bead. Let me show you what we have so far. 
And the reason I'm threading these hishi beads on there is for spacing. I want my leaves to be spaced down evenly, okay? Plus it adds a little splash of color. So the next bead that we're going to thread is this one, okay? Now this one is going to have a little piece of chain underneath because we're going to use the chain to attach this leaf pendant. All right, so let me show you what we're going to do. So here's the chain that we're going to be wrapping around the bottom of this bead, okay? And I've already figured out how long the chain needs to be, okay? So what I need to do now is open up one of these links. I always try to save my cutters if I can. So if I see that the, these are links that can be opened, I, I just open them. I don't cut them. And this is the piece that we're going to be using, okay? It's not very big at all, all right? If you need the measurements, let me give you the measurements. It's about 15 16th of an inch or 23.83 millimeters, almost 24. Okay, it's going to wrap around this bead pretty snugly. Let me show you. We're going to thread the leather cord through this link right here. Okay, and then we're going to thread it through the bead just like that. And then we're going to wrap the chain around the bottom. And this is a little challenging because I want it to be pretty snug and thread it through the leather cord again. So this is what you should have. Whatever chain you use, you want to make sure that you have an odd number so that there's one link at the very bottom of your bead. Just like that. Okay. Slide it down. And now we're going to attach this copper leaf to the bottom of that chain. And we're actually going to use one of the smaller jump rings for that. The five millimeter jump ring. And it's pretty strong. Like I said, these are 18 gauge. So these are going to hold up really well. Hook it onto the hole of the pendant like this. And then hook it onto the bottom of this chain like this. And this is what you should have so far. So the reason I used the five millimeter is because I didn't want the leaf to drop down too far. Okay. Had I used a six millimeter jump ring, it would be hanging too low and I didn't want that. So that's why I used the smaller jump ring. But you know, if you're going to use a smaller jump ring, like I said before, it's got to be a strong one. So I recommend 18 or 19 gauge. So now that we have this one attached, we're going to repeat the same pattern in reverse. So let's go ahead and thread on one of these hishi beads. The maple leaf, another one of the wooden hishi beads, the red ceramic bead, another hishi bead, and this one I've already attached a six millimeter jump ring. The mustard colored bead and the gold charm and you want to make sure that it's mirroring the one on the other side okay just like that and now one of these light colored ceramic beads and this melon bead So this is what you should have. Okay, so now we're going to do some barrel knots to finish this off. And I'm going to keep my clip on here. As you can see, we have quite a bit of leather to work with. So you may actually need less than 20 inches, guys, okay, if you're experienced at making barrel knots. But I told you to get 20 inches just because I know some of you are beginners. And I don't know about you, but when I first started doing barrel knots, I would start, I would mess it up, and then I'd have to snip off the bit that was messed up and start again. So that's why I'm recommending 20 inches so that you have plenty to work with. Now for the barrel knot, you're going to need something that's tubular, okay? Now you can use these uh, nifty tube beads. I have the curved ones. I have a straight one right here. It's square. I don't even know where I got it from, actually. I think I got it from Amazon a long time ago. And if you don't have this, you can use a straw. Here's one that I got at a local coffee shop and it's not a regular size straw. As you can see, it's a little bit thinner and you simply snip off a piece just like this 
and that's all you need guys okay you don't need metal beads at all you really don't in fact I'm going to show you how to do the barrel knot with a straw we're going to start the barrel knot pretty far down okay so you want a length that's about let me go ahead and measure it for you at least six inches okay make a little loop like this so this is what you should have with this piece the short piece on the top and the longer piece on the bottom just like this take your piece of straw and place it on top like this you're going to take this end now and go towards the back and do three wraps so one two three like this hold on to your wraps once you have your wraps formed you can actually shorten the loop a little bit by pulling on this end right here just a little bit take the end now and thread it through the straw just like that and now grab the wraps remove the straw carefully and pull the, the little end let me just show you okay the main thing is that you hold on to these wraps make sure that they're sitting side by side like this and now you just have to manipulate the, the wraps by rolling them roll them between your index finger and your thumb and I like to insert the tube this way to keep that loop open so it doesn't slide through okay and then pull and tighten the wraps so you want to pull both ends roll them and continue to roll until you get three tight little wraps okay pull a little bit but don't lose that loop it's a little tricky as you can see I'm grabbing this end of the loop pulling this one and then I'm pulling this one to shorten that loop a little bit so it takes a little practice but just keep trying guys and eventually you'll get it okay you want to end up with three neat wraps like this normally what I do is I add a little bit of glue in between the wraps and inside there because this is a sliding knot of sorts okay so if your wraps aren't tight it could slide but usually if you make them really tight it's a pretty secure knot so now what we're going to do is snip off the excess like this try not to snip the wraps and this is what you should have okay let's go ahead and add some glue I like to use GS Hypo Cement because it has a very thin applicator and you're simply going to add a little glue inside this area here where the loop is and then a little bit in between your wraps not too much and then again some glue on this side very small amount okay that's all there is to it you should give it some time to dry okay I recommend at least a couple of hours but I'm gonna keep going because I want to get this tutorial done so I'm gonna slide my beads down once you have your beads slid down you're gonna to come to this end okay now this bell knot is going to be a little bit more difficult I'll be honest with you okay and the reason is that we want to try to get as close to that bead as possible so we're going to make a loop very close to your bead like this okay as close as you can get what I'm doing is I'm measuring the length of this one here okay that's how much length you want on this side they need to be the same length so normally what I do is I take my end and I hold it up and I try to get that loop to be the same distance once you have that take your straw place it on top and do your three wraps the best way you can okay so one two three 
two, three, take the end and thread it through the straw. Remove the straw carefully and then go ahead and roll your wraps tight. It's a little tricky, like I said, but just keep rolling and pulling until you get them nice and tight, okay? Just like that. Once you have your wraps, snip off the excess, add a little glue just like we did on the other end. Try not to get the glue on your beads, okay? You don't want to add too much. You don't want it dripping. A little goes a long way. This is pretty strong glue. And that's it, guys. Isn't that cute? It's so adorable. So like I said before, it's okay to have a little leather showing. That's what we want. We want to show off the nice leather, okay? Now that we have this done, we're going to make some charms that are going to hang in front of this leaf. These are the beads we're going to be using for the charms. We're also going to use some of these ball head pins. And I'm going to snip off a piece of this dainty chain about an inch long, I would say. Let me go ahead and cut it. So we're going to hang this piece of chain right in the middle of this leaf, okay? And this piece of chain is going to have some little dangles on it. And I always like to start with the bottom one first. And I think I'm going to make the bottom one red. So thread it onto your bead like this. Grab the wire at the very top of the bead like this. And we're just gonna make the beginning of a wrapped loop. So switch your pliers to this end of the wire. Bend it, wrap it around the top nose like this. Flip your pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back like this. And before you go any further, attach it to your chain. So we're going to grab the chain and attach it to the very last link. Just like this, slip it into the loop, like this. Grab the loop with a skinny set of pliers, and I like to use these by Zeron, they're crimping pliers by Zeron. I use these because they have a very thin, flat tip, and I can grab very tiny loops. So grab it, and then with another set of pliers, needle nose pliers, you're going to make two to three wraps, something like that, okay? It's up to you how many wraps you want to do. Once you have your wraps, snip off the excess, and tuck in any little sharp bit that you may see sticking out. And this is what we have. Now you might want to hold it up to your leaf to see how far down it drops, okay? And that looks about right. And by the way, guys, this leaf does have a front side and a back side. So you want to make sure you hang your charms on the correct side of the leaf. But we're not going to do that yet. We're going to continue to attach little dangles to this piece of chain. So the next dangle is going to be a leaf, a leaf bead like this. Isn't that cute? It's so adorable. So once again, you're going to grab the wire at the very top of the bead, kink it, switch to this end of the wire now, the pin, wrap it around the nose like this, flip your pliers around, continue to wrap to the back like this, Remove your pliers. And now you need to decide where you want to attach it. And I think I'm going to attach it on this link here just because the leaf drops down quite a bit. Okay, and I don't want it covering the bottom bead. Grab the loop and do a couple of wraps. 
Now you're going to snip off the excess and tuck in the little bit. So this is what you should have. So I'm going to continue to connect these charms. I'll speed up the video and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've attached my little dangles and there really aren't any rules, guys, okay? Basically what I do is I start at the bottom and then I work my way up and I just hang them wherever I think it looks good, okay? There are no rules, okay? They're not spaced out perfectly evenly. I just figure out what looks best and that's where I hang the dangles. So now that we have these done, we're gonna connect them to this leaf pendant. I was gonna use another jump ring here, but I think what I'll do is open this one up, okay? So let me go ahead and open it up. And then I'm going to hook the last link onto my jump ring, just like this, and close it up again. Really well. And this is what we have so far. Isn't that adorable, guys? Look at this. Isn't that cute? It's so adorable. Now that we've got this portion done, we have to decide should we make some more beaded components or should we just attach the chain and call it a day. I think what I'm going to do is make some more beaded components because I want to add a little bit more interest and I'm just going to add one on each side and then I'll attach the chain. So for that we're going to need some more of the ceramic beads. Let me go get them. I think I'm going to use these mustard colored ones, one on each end like that. And then I do want to add more red to these components. I'm going to use these rondelles, one on each side like this. So for the beaded components, we'll use this artistic wire 20 gauge, and we're going to snip off two pieces. Each one is about three inches long. We're going to grab the wire about a third of the way down, give it a kink, switch to the short end like this, wrap it around the top nose, flip your pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this. Remove your pliers. Now we're going to attach this loop to the leather cord so to do that you will need to open the loop a little bit. Attach it through this loop, the leather cord loop, and close up your loop again like this. Grab it with your skinny pliers and then with another set, you're going to do about two wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little piece, the little end. Thread on a red bead, the ceramic bead, another red bead, like this. Grab the wire at the top of the bead and give it a kink. Switch to this end of the wire now. Wrap it around. Flip your pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. Remove your pliers and now we're going to attach the chain. I have my long piece of chain here and I'm not going to cut it just yet, okay? I'm simply going to attach the end of it to the loop like this. Grab the loop with your skinny pliers 
and then close it up with a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little end. So this is what we have so far. As you can see, I have the long piece of chain here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mirror and hold this up to my chest and figure out how long I want it to be. Once I figure out how long I want the necklace to be, then I'm going to cut the chain. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to cut myself a piece that's six inches long. Okay, so this strand is approximately nine inches long from this bead to the end. Okay, the clasp is going to add another inch. So the necklace is going to be about 19 or 20 inches, but obviously you can make it as long as you want. Okay, it's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this little link here. Remove the chain. Here's the six inch piece. And now, since I already know the length, I'm going to go ahead and measure out another piece that's six inches long. There's my second piece. So once again, grab the wire a third of the way down, give it a kink, flip your plies to the short end of your wire, wrap it around your nose, flip your plies around, continue to wrap to the back, Open up your loop a little bit so you can slide it into the loop of the leather cord. Grab that loop and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little end. and thread your beads. The red one, the ceramic one, and the other red one. Bring them down. Once again, grab that loop, kink it, and do your little loop at the end. Attach it to your chain, like this. Grab the loop and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess and tuck in the little end. Isn't that adorable, guys? I know I keep saying that. I just love the combination of the leather, the gold, the bronze. So much going on, but it all coordinates really nice. I absolutely adore these leaves. I know I keep going on about it, but they're just so cute. Okay, so now that we have the chain attached, all we have to do is attach the clasp. I have my lobster claw clasp and two six millimeter jump rings. Grab the jump ring. Open it up. Attach it to the end of your chain and then attach your clasp and close it up. And on this side, we attach the jump ring And this necklace is done. Isn't it adorable? I love it. And look how cute it looks with this minimalist necklace that I made to go with it. Isn't that cute, guys? Look at that. Now this one was very easy. I just took one of the red rondelles, did a wrap loop on one end, attached it to the chain, did another wrap loop at the other end, and attached it to this charm. I know some of you like minimalist jewelry. I actually wear it as well. So I thought I would make this necklace. 
I didn't want to make this video too long, which is why I didn't show you, but if you can do these wrap loops, you can certainly do this one here the same way, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and put these on and show you what it looks like. Here's the lovely necklace. I'm officially ready for fall now. It's actually very festive. I could see myself wearing this to a dinner event, some kind of a party, and perhaps a Thanksgiving dinner event. I know that's not till November, but don't you love this botanical look? I absolutely adore it. Let me give you a close-up so you can take a better look. Isn't it gorgeous, guys? Look at that. Look how pretty it is. I love the colors and I love the leaves. And here's the more minimalist necklace. Don't you love it? I actually like this one better, believe it or not. This is actually what they wear in my area. I live in the DC area and the women wear very conservative jewelry. It's simple, but beautiful, easy to wear and very lightweight. But here are both of them. I don't know if I like this look. I think I'd rather have either one or the other, but not both. What do you think? They look cute together though, don't you think? Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Go out and make your own beautiful necklaces. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.